In today's video tutorial, we're going to be using Python's Turtle module to create ourselves this cool little game called Turtle Race. As you can see, four turtles line up at the start of the screen there, and they just race along a dirt track there until they hit the finish line. The turtle that hits the finish line first is obviously declared the winner. And as you can see in this example, the blue guy was the winner. So he grew a little bit bigger and did a little dance to celebrate his victory. You'll also see the console over here tell you who the winning turtle is. Okay, so let's get started on making this game uh, by heading over to our Python editor. Now I'm using Mew in today's example. Now the first thing that we want to do is you just want to import a few functions from some modules. So as always, let's start off with from turtle, import star, just saying from the turtle module, which is a library of code written by some other person. We're going to import all the functions inside of it to save us writing too much code. We're then going to import um, everything from the random module. So from random, import star. We're also going to import turtle and import time. And I'll show you where those uh, modules come in handy throughout the code as we go through the program. Now the first real thing we want to get stuck into is setting up our screen. Just the basic features. So I'm going to write screen setup as a comment. And the first thing I want to do is just set the size of our screen to 800 pixels width and 500 pixels in height. We do that using the screen. Uh, we do that using the setup function. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to put in a title at the top of our window. So that title is going to say Turtle Race. Now I'll show you what that title does in just a moment. I just want to write a couple more things first. I want to set the BG color to Forest Green. And the speed that we're drawing at today is going to be speed zero, which is obviously the fastest speed that the turtle um, can draw. Once you've got those four things in, that's the basic things we need set up on our screen. So save your code there. Just call it turtle race. And give it a run. And you should see a green box appear on your screen. It's 800 pixels across, 500 pixels down. Top left hand corner there has the title. Okay, remember we use this title line here to write a title for our window and it's called Turtle Race. All right, so that's our screen setup done. Next thing I want to do is I want to put a heading that runs across the top of the page here that just says Turtle Race as well. Okay, so let's have a go at doing that. I'm going to put in another comment here that says heading. And I'm going to lift my pen up off the page. So when I move to a set of coordinates in a moment, the turtle as it moves will not be drawing a line if I didn't use pan up and move the turtle it, a line would follow the turtle wherever it went so that's why we lift our pen up off the page um, just so it doesn't draw a line when we move it so let's move our turtle now by using the go to function we're going to send it to minus 100 which is just a little bit to the left of the page on our x-axis and we're going to put a comma and write 205 for the y-axis which because it's in the positives, we'll head up the page. So we want to basically position ourselves up the top of the page and a little bit to the left, ready for us to write a heading in. Now before we write this heading, we want to change the color to white, so it contrasts well with our green grass. And then we're simply going to use a function called write, and in quotation marks and brackets, write turtle race in capital letters. Let's just save that and see if it works. It's not quite finished, but we'll see what comes up. There we go. Turtle race. A little bit to the left and towards the top of the page. We just need to make it a bit bigger now. So the way we format our text is we go back inside this set of brackets here under the write function. And after turtle race's quotation marks, put a comma and write font, oops, font equals. And then in brackets, I want you to write Arial. And then I'm going to put another comma and write 20. And then I'm going to put another comma and in quotation marks, write bold. What's happening here is it's basically saying the font that we're using is Arial. The size that our font's going to be is 20. And we're going to set a style to bold. Okay, nothing fancy, but let's just, whoops, got to close the set of brackets here. Remember after bold, we need two closing brackets. Got one bracket here to close off and another bracket here to close off. So you need to have two of them at the end of the line there. Just give that a run, and you can now see that our heading is just a bit bigger on the page. If you're wondering what this little white icon in here is, that's our turtle. 
Okay, that's what's drawing everything on the page for us, so we'll hide that later on at the end of our code. That is our heading done. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a dirt track up for our um, turtle race to occur on. Basically, our dirt track is a brown rectangle. Okay, it's just a little bit smaller than the page size, so we have a green border of grass around the outside and a big brown rectangle in the middle for the race track. So let's put a comment in that says dirt. And because our pen's still lifted up, I'm just going to move to a new set of coordinates using the go to function. I'm going to go to minus 350, comma 200. So the x value is minus 350, which is way over on the left hand side of the page. And 200 is up towards the top of our screen. Once there, we can put our pen down. And then we can start colouring in this dirt track. So first of all, let's pick a colour. The colour I'm going to use is chocolate. And we can turn our fill on. So the shape that we're about to draw, we want it filled in. So let's write begin fill. Now I'm going to use a loop to draw this rectangle. So just for I in range 2, we put a colon. And these indented lines of code are the ones we're going to repeat twice. So we're going to move forward 700 pixels across the page. Then I'm going to turn right 90 degrees and go forward 400. Setting down the page now. And then we're going to turn right. I'm going to be facing back towards the um, left side of the page. Okay, this here, these indented four lines of code, will draw half a rectangle. But because we've indented them and at the top of it, we've told the computer to repeat this code twice, we will end up with a complete rectangle. Now to make sure this rectangle is colored in this brownie color, we need to write end underscore fill at the bottom there. And it's not indented, it's pushed back to the left hand side of the page. Let's give that a save and a run and hopefully we've got our dirt track, which we do. Okay, that looks pretty good. The nice green grass around the outside of it and the dirt track in the middle. All right, so far so good. Next thing I'm going to put in is the finish line that runs down the right hand side of the dirt track. It's going to be like a big checkered flag. Alright, so we'll put in a comment that says finish line. It's a little bit confusing this finish line, but let's just roll through it and see how we go. There's a bit of maths involved. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a variable called gap size, which is basically the gap between each little box in the checkerboard uh, that we're drawing up. So. That's right, gap underscore size, and we'll set it equal to 20. And on the next line, I'm going to change the shape of my turtle icon. You know that little turtle icon we saw before, it looked like a little arrow. I'm going to change the shape of that by simply calling the shape function up and writing square. Okay, and we're going to use that little turtle to basically stamp on all these squares on the page to create that finish line. Now we need to move to a new set of coordinates, so I'm going to lift my pen up off the page here. And I'm going to put another comment that says white squares row 1. Okay, you'll see what that means in just a moment. So the colour we want these squares to be, as you would have guessed from the comment, is white. And we're going to have 10 white boxes go down the page for the first row of our checkerboard, basically. So I'm going to write for I in range 10 put a colon. We're going to go to 250 for the x value. Okay, so that's over towards the right hand side of the page. And our y value actually involves a bit of maths. Okay, so I'm going to open up a bracket and write 170, which is our y coordinate. And we're going to go minus i times gap. Oops underscore size and then we're going to put times two just to confuse you and we need to close off three sets of brackets there okay so I did tell you there's a bit of maths there but basically 250 is the x value where we want to draw our first square and this one over here 170 minus all this stuff is the y value so it's going to be up towards the top of the page and as we repeat this loop 10 times, it is going to start to come down the page. Okay. The only other thing we need to do now is write stamp bracket bracket. What that is going to do, it's going to stamp a square on the page. Okay. And each time we run this loop, 
we stamp on a new square. Okay, let's just have a look. I'll save it and I'll show you what I mean. There we go. So we've got all of our white squares in there for the first row of our checkerboard. What I want to do is make it two, basically two rows here. So I want to add a second row of white um, squares that run down the right hand side of that one. So let's have a go at doing that using pretty similar code. So I'm going to copy all of that and paste it down below. And I'm going to change the comment to say row two. I don't need the color white anymore. I'll just delete that because we've already written it up here. So we don't need to write it a second time. We're going to leave the loop as repeating 10 times. The go to will be 250. But this time we're going to write plus gap underscore size. Okay, so the X value is 250 across to the right hand side plus the gap size, which was, if we just scroll up a little bit, 20. Okay, now in brackets over here for the Y value, it's going to change a little bit to what we've got. It's going to be 210 minus the gap size. So 210 minus gap underscore size. I'm going to close the bracket there and take away I times gap size times 2. Pretty long, pretty tedious. You don't have to fully understand it, but basically it's just getting those little squares for the finish line into the right position. Okay, so just make sure you've written the same thing as me. The last line is stamping those squares onto the page. Okay, so we now should have 20 white squares appear on the page. Uh, what have I missed here? One, two, three. One, two, three. Um, I think I might. We don't need that bracket there, we don't need that other bracket, so we just needed two brackets at the end. I'm missing one, so I'm going to put one there, one there. Okay, so I did miss a bracket just there, so I put that in now. Let's give that a run. There we go. So we've got our checkerboard looking pretty good so far. We just need to add the black squares now into all these gaps between the white ones. So let's do that by adding in a comment that says black squares row one. And it's going to be pretty similar to what we just wrote. So let's change our color to black. And we're going to do for i in range 10, same as above. Put a colon and we're going to write go to 250 for the x value again. Now the y value here is going to be 190 take away and in brackets i times gap size times 2. Oops. Close the bracket, close the bracket, close the bracket. Three closing brackets there at the end. So basically we've got 250 for the x value which is over the right hand side of the page and then we've got this little Bit of math there to work out the y value, so how far up or down the page is the first black square. Once it's in position, we stamp it into place. Okay, and that should give us the first row of black squares. Okay, looks good. Now we've just got to fill in the black squares over here on the right hand side, which is easy enough to do if we just do it a copy paste job. Oops. So let's copy that comment. It's going to be black squares row two. We don't need color black anymore because we've already written it in the section above. Nothing's changed since then. Um, so we'll leave the four I in range 10 colon. We're going to go to 250, right, 251 here. Just makes it look a little bit nicer uh, from testing it before. It'll be 251 plus the gap size. And put a comma, we do new set of brackets here so we're going to have two sets of brackets 190 minus the gap size close the brackets take away i times gap size times two and then we stamp in that second lot of black squares okay you don't have to fully understand that but basically that's the code there to get the two black rows into our finish line so our finish line looks really good now all right so i might give you a bit of a break here Okay, we're probably about halfway through the tutorial, so I'm going to give you a bit of a break. Save what you've got. I'm going to stop the video here, and I'm going to come back in a second video to hopefully finish things off 
for our little turtle race game.